anti-Semitism or something more. Iran has long vowed to wipe out Israel. Dale Hurd reports Iranian leaders are motivated by a belief that the Jewish state must be eliminated before the return of an Islamic figure known as the Mahdi. Iran has been indoctrinating its fighters throughout the Middle East in the belief that Israel is the biggest obstacle to the return of the Mahdi and that there must be an apocalyptic war that destroys both Israel and Jews around the world. Islamic expert Raymond Ibrahim. So the Mahdi, as, as an English speaker would pronounce it, it's really Mahdi, which basically means guided. So he's the guided one, or in Islamic understanding, he's the rightly guided one. And he takes on different guises, depending on which sect of Islam you ask, Sunni or Shia. Sunnis, the majority of the world's Muslims, believe the Mahdi has not yet been born. The Prophet said, hadith is in Abu Dawood, a man shall come towards the end of times. His name will be my name. And the name of his father will be the name of my father, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Shia Islam, which is dominated by Iran, teaches that the Mahdi is already alive and has been hiding for over a thousand years. Brother Rashid, a former Muslim, hosts a Christian program for Muslims called Daring Questions. The Shia Muslims, uh, especially the Twelver Shiism, they believe that he is the twelfth Imam and he was born around 868, so he just disappeared. He's still alive until today. His age is 1155, if you want to. So he's still living somewhere, and um, one day he will show himself. Muslims in Iran believe the Mahdi is hiding in this well in the mosque of Jamkaran. Pilgrims peer down the well with flashlights, leave prayer requests for the Mahdi and hope he will reappear. Muslims believe that when the Mahdi returns, he will be accompanied by Jesus, known in Islam as the Prophet Isa, to rid the world of evil. Iranian leaders have seized upon belief in the final battle before the Mahdi's return to motivate its military and allies to fight harder to destroy Israel. And a lot of the you know, Islamic schools or jihadists are being indoctrinated by by the Iranian propaganda in in Mahdiism. And again, it always centers around Israel and attacking and destroying Israel. Some believe in the next phase of its plan to wipe out Israel, Iran might initiate a multi-front attack through its heavily armed proxy armies in Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Ibrahim and Brother Rashid say the doctrine of the Mahdi's return means that any attempts by Israel to make peace with the Muslim world will ultimately prove to be futile. Israel is a threat to Muslims, to the Mahdi, to the coming of the Mahdi Saudi, they have to be eliminated. There is no, no other solution. So I don't think Israel could ever have permanent peace unless Islam were to completely change itself and become not Islam, to be something completely different. And Ibrahim worries that Iran might be willing to use a nuclear weapon against Israel to ensure the return of the Mahdi. Dale Hurd joins us to provide some additional insights. So Dale, if religious belief and the hastening of the return of the Islamic Mahdi are the motivation for Iran's actions, what's the solution? Yeah, it probably involves weapons and a lot of money. It's interesting that a, Palesti a former Palestinian refugee camp occupant, uh, a guy who was in one of the Lebanon camps, you know, we were talking about this and he said that the problem with Gaza, the problem with all of this is Islam. And that sounds really simplistic until you go to this and you see that uh, there is evidence that the Mahdi idea, the Mahdi doctrine was the idea behind the Gaza attack and could be the idea now behind a multi-tiered attack against Israel. Well, traders expect the price of oil to reach about $110 per barrel this spring because of ongoing tensions in the Red Sea region. So is there more than just the ushering in of the Mahdi motivating Iran here to create this mayhem in the Middle East with the Houthis attacking uh, shipping? There's certainly that. I also think that they're using the Houthis because Iran knows their military is not very good and they would get flattened in a direct confrontation with the United States. It doesn't help that this administration has been giving Iran a hug in the form of, you know, trying to free up their money and so forth. It's only encouraged their belligerence. 
But yeah, they, they want to keep this up, and I think the only way there will be peace in the Middle East, at least in that region, is when the Iranian government is neutralized. Well, let's talk about that. You've been reporting on this for a long time. So what do you see happening in the days ahead? A broader war with other Iranian proxies like Hezbollah in Lebanon, the uh, militias in Iraq and Syria, even Iran itself? And I think Iran will do all it can to prolong or prevent a direct war with United States or NATO nations or Britain because, I mean, they're still, they're still showing F-4 phantoms from the Vietnam War in some of their military promotional videos. Their military is, I think, very uh, under-equipped and inept. Um, and, but, and so they're going to go to these proxy forces that people may not know they have in several nations. They have proxy armies in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, of course, in Lebanon. And as I have mentioned, people fear a multi-tiered attack scenario in which each of these armies take a crack at Israel. Okay, Dale Hurd, thanks for your insightful report and those additional thoughts. Thank you.